After what was a very thorough investigation, a Southern California pastor has been arrested on some pretty bad charges. Now, you know, we cover this sort of mistreatment in the church all the time. And it just, it, it never ceases to amaze me that these wolves think that they're just going to get away with this for as long as they want to. Okay. This season of exposure that I have talked about now for quite some time, it's continuing. But what I want to point out to you here is that, you know, a lot of people think it's just in the big mega churches, right? It's only going to happen in mega churches. That's not the case because it's happening in the small churches too. You know, God is fed up with this. It doesn't matter to him. If your church has 10 people or if it has 10,000 people, if there is darkness going on, if there are wolves who are posing as true pastors, God is going to expose you. He is going to get rid of you. And that is what we are seeing here. This is an investigation that police have been looking into since May of 2024. And now we have an arrest and the community is going to be a lot better off for it. We're going to get into everything that happened in just a second. But before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story of how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see I've made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. If you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, we have multiple ways you could do that. One, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You can also become a monthly contributor for as little as five bucks a month. Would love for you to do that by going to patreon.com slash notbysightnews, that link in the description. And you could also help us out on our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link is in the description of this video. Why did we create the GoFundMe? The GoFundMe was created to help out myself and my wife with our stacking medical bills and other bills piling up on us right now uh, as she is currently recovering from suffering a stroke. It happened back in August. She's only 39 years old. Uh, we've gone through a tremendous amount of, of trial since then. Uh, multiple complications arose from the stroke. And, and so she's recovering now. Uh, but, you know, we have a lot of follow-up appointments and things like that. So if you feel led to help us out, if you just enjoy this ministry and the work that I do here and you want to help us out again by any of those ways that I mentioned, whether it's through the GoFundMe, the Patreon, being a monthly contributor, or the Super Thanks on YT, we appreciate that and love you all for it. If you don't have the means to donate, no problem. You can still help us out in a major way by just hitting the like button on these videos and sharing them around when you do that. It helps to get these videos out there more in the algorithm in the recommended section and get some more eyes and helps us uh, bring a little bit more revenue in from that. So again, thank you for helping us out. However you choose to do so, keep us in your prayers as we continue to go through what we are right now. We love you all again. Thank you so much. Let's talk about this. Police have announced the arrest of a Southern California pastor in Orange County by the name of Juan Barrios. He is 51 years old. He was arrested on September 8th after, again, an investigation that started back in May of 2024, and it is from incidents that occurred between 2009 and 2015. Now, Juan Barrios was the pastor of a small Spanish-speaking church in Fullerton, California, okay? And the name of the church is Iglesia de Dios Israelita. Hope I did a good job of pronouncing that. I took Spanish. It took like four years of Spanish in school. I like to, you know, use it whenever I can a little bit. So, as I mentioned, this is a smaller church, okay? It's not a big mega church, but it doesn't have to be. God, God is not going to spare anybody. It doesn't matter again. He's not looking at the attendance of the church. He's looking at the heart. And if the heart is pure or if the heart is corrupt. And in the case here of Barrios, it was corrupt. And I also want to point this out before I get, you know, into all the, the details about the arrest. Because this is something that people often confuse. There's a lot of people, they get really mad at me, right? They don't like to, they, they you know, 
they don't like what I do, but yet they have no issue commenting and yelling at me and everything. It's like, you don't go like, you don't like what I do. Just go watch someone else. But they can't help it, right? It's like they're just obsessed. They can't help. They gotta, I gotta comment and not by site news and tell them how much I don't like him and what he does and exposing darkness and blah, 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 blah. For those that have issue with this, go listen to somebody like Joel, Joel Osteen, who will give you a nice positive message, a good candy, you know, a, a good like, you know, candy coated type of feel good motivational speech. Hi guys, it's me, Joel. You want to listen to me? I don't talk about sin or repentance. I don't, I don't mention that. That's offensive. We only talk about good positive things over here. Go listen to Joel. There is a big difference between a fallen pastor and a wolf. A fallen pastor indicates that at one point that pastor was doing right by serving the Lord. He had the best interest of his flock. He wanted to do right, but something happened and he slipped up, no matter what it was, okay? And he actually has true remorse and will actually repent and turn from whatever it was that he did, okay? That's a fallen pastor. But then there are those who are pure wolves that never had a walk with Christ to begin with, and nor do they have a desire to have one with him. You have to look at the fruit that they're bearing. Is it fruit that resembles Christ or is it fruit that resembles Satan? Okay, there's a big difference here. And again, for all the people that say, oh, we've got to pray for all these pastors, this particular individual, Juan Barrios, that we're going to talk about here, not a pastor. Now, some people will say, why do you even call them pastors then? I'm calling them that because for one, it's reference. They are, okay, calling themselves a pastor. So I believe that God is going to hold them to the same standard that he would a, a pastor, even if he's a called pastor, even if he was somebody that you know, truly was, you know, one that was walking with the Lord and slipped up. Because I believe that there is accountability, no matter if, again, you are posing as a pastor, but you are really a wolf, or if you are an actual, genuine pastor that slipped up into some sin and then repented for it. That's why I call them that. That's why I will give them that title. I don't have to personally recognize them, one, you know, myself, but, you know, for the purpose of the story and what we're covering here, okay, that's the title that we're going to go with. Okay, because again, God... You know, if God didn't care, he'd just leave him there. No, he's plucking them out. Okay, so I want to want to mention that. Now, let me get to the arrest. As I mentioned, the arrest stems from events that took place between 2009 and 2015. In May of 2024, police uh, had gotten information from one of the John Does that were affected here. We're talking about two brothers, okay? Two brothers and their family actually lived with the pastor between 2009 and 2015. One of the John Doe's came forward in May and spoke to police and said that both he and his brother were mistreated. And again, I use that word in place of another for obvious reasons. They were mistreated by Pastor Juan Barrios for a period of six years. That's, can you imagine? Six years. And by the way, for one of the John Doe's, he said that for him, the mistreatment started when he was only nine and continued on until he was somewhere around his mid-teens. Same thing with his brother. Six years. I can't imagine the horror that they must have had to endure for that long. And on top of that, knowing that this guy was the pastor of their church, they were probably scared to come forward any sooner and mention what was happening because the family was also living with the pastor. Now, you know, I, I don't have the answer to this, but I do wonder, did their family know about it? Did the pastor tell the two brothers, hey, you better not mention anything to your parents about this. You're going to get me in trouble. You're going to get me fired. I mean, we know they use manipulation tactics like this all the time. So it wouldn't surprise me. Not one bit. Maybe they just recently came forward in May, told their parents about what happened, and then they, you know, helped them report it to the police. Whatever the case, it's, again, a horrifying thing to think about that they had to, again, two brothers, where they had to endure mistreatment on a regular basis for six years. Now, police have also stated that they do believe 
that there are more out there, that there are more John Doe's, maybe Jane Doe's out there that have just been too scared to come forward. Okay. They have it on, you know, they have it on good authority that that's the case. And it often is when you're dealing with these cases of mistreatment. Okay. I always say this, you look at the statistics, it's usually never more than one, or it's, I should say it's usually way more than one. And uh, in, in a case like this, we could be dealing with quite a few. Okay. That's just how these wolves operate. So police are encouraging anybody who has more information on Juan Barrios to come forward. If you were mistreated by him, whether you were in the church or you were somewhere else, please come forward. Now Barrios was released from jail on a $500,000 bond. He's out, but hopefully not for long and will appear in court soon. So look, God's going to continue. Again, he's getting rid of these wolves one by one, whether they're arrested, whether they're fired, whether however it is that they're removed from the church, he's getting rid of them. He's done with this. And if you are somebody, I always say this, if you're somebody who's been mistreated, this is the time to come forward. This is the time. Because no longer can these wolves hide anymore and get away with this sort of thing. I want to hear from you guys on this. You can let me know your thoughts in the comments section here. What do you think about Pastor Juan Barrios being arrested? Do you feel there are more, you know, John and Jane Doe's out there that have yet to come forward about mistreatment? Let me know. Don't forget as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, remember we have those multiple ways. You can hit the super thanks button on the YT video. Become a monthly contributor. Would so much love for you to do that for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news. Or again, you can help us out on our GoFundMe. And that link is down in the description as well. And remember too, if you don't have the means to donate, just help us out by hitting the like button on these videos and sharing them. That will help to get us out there more in the algorithm and the recommended section. Uh, it's all a great blessing. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves who occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news, God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.